Good afternoon and welcome back to the workbench. So in a previous video you probably saw that I bought some more of the uh, UV photoresist um, stuff for making circuit boards. And that was because I'd almost run out of the stuff that I had here, which is what I'd originally bought uh, a few years ago. Um, now the difference between this old stuff and the new stuff, um, as far as I can tell, well, as far as I know anyway, is that uh, this stuff I bought um, came in pre-cut sheets of like A5 size and they were all, I think it was like 20 of them or something and they were all just kind of rolled up in this bit of foam and um, that's uh, some of the stuff there uh, this stuff worked pretty well but because it was rolled up like this uh, it did actually come kind of wrinkled so I decided that when I bought some more I wouldn't do that again so the next time which was the last time um, I bought it in a roll instead, so that's uh, in, in here. So I'm uh, going to use this today to, or at least attempt to, to make this board here. This is the mask for it that I've uh, got there um, on this uh, piece of board here. And that's all good, but um, there is uh, something I do want to do first, which is to uh, recheck my exposure time, which is currently for that stuff was 15 minutes, um, and I want to check to be sure that uh, that will also work for this because I don't know. Um, obviously, I mean I assume coming from China, um, cheap stuff, it's probably all the same. I'm guessing this and that should be pretty much identical manufacture, but of course I don't know. And on the other hand, you know there is a kind of wide variety in products from there, so could be anything. Um, it could be quite different, I don't know. Um, maybe different variations in the chemical batch possibly make it more sensitive or less sensitive, so um, the amount of time I'll need to expose it for, I, I don't know how uh, how long that will be. So I've never actually opened this before, um, so I don't even know what it looks like, but this one is kind of a dark blue, um, I guess we'll see what this looks like. So. Um, First of all, I'm going to use this uh, bit of scrap board here to do a sort of calibration thing, and I'll show how that works, um, or at least my basic sort of way of doing it, which is probably not the uh, most precise, but it still works to some extent. And that's how I did it when I originally got my 15 minutes um, concept, so it does work fairly well. Um, you can buy special exposure gauges, which I've talked about before, but... Um, yeah, it's not really necessary. You can do a quick and dirty sort of thing, uh, just with just with a uh, a ruler. Well, steel rule is what I got here. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Um, if I can actually get this thing open. Um, how is this wrapped up? Okay. So obviously, because this is UV sensitive, you don't want to keep it out um, in the sunlight, ambient light, too much. Um, that's why I've got the blinds closed and everything, and I'm just going to cut a little bit off and then stick it straight back in the bag and put it back in the uh, in here once I've um, once I've got what I want. And like these, I keep these in this. Uh, this is interesting, they seem to have wrapped it up in a, uh, there we go, in a, just a plastic bag. Okay, well it's uh, definitely about the same colour as that, so that makes sense. Um, where is the end on this? Is there an end? And is this going to be, uh, how have they done this? Oh, there we go. It's kind of stuck itself down on one, on the end there. Okay, so is that? So I think I'm noticing is uh, it looks like it's got plastic, a plastic protective layer on one side, but I'm not sure if it has it on both sides. Um, 
Oh, I think it does. I think it's just got a kind of a carrier film on one side. It's thicker than the other stuff. Anyway, I'm trying to get this actually off here. It's kind of stuck. The uh, sort of cut edge is sort of melted onto the rest of the plastic there, so it might be something to do with the summer heat around here, but otherwise it uh, comes off pretty good. It looks it looks good. Um, yeah, it looks in better condition than the uh, stuff I got there. They look like they've uh, <laughs> wrapped it around a piece of PVC pipe. It's just been sort of cut off. Um, anyway, I mean, it should be fine. So I'm just going to cut off a strip. I'll just cut a... Well, yeah, I'll just cut a strip off here. We don't need much. And that uh, edge there is not sort of that clean, so it doesn't matter. Let's just cut... Uh, I don't know. That should be alright. And like I said, I'm just going to wrap it straight back up in here again and uh, shove it in there just to make sure it doesn't get get uh, overexposed by accident now um, so yeah I mean, it doesn't matter if this is wrinkled it, uh, for this test it's not going to be relevant um, so you take the uh, protective film off, generally with two pieces of sellotape. Um, if I can find the end of this as well. So you uh, sort of put one on one corner like that on one side and then you put the other side on the same corner but on the other side of the film and then you just pull them apart and the plastic peels off so there we go and that's come off one side so we don't need that and then this is just our uh, plain resist film so I'm just going to uh, stick that on here um, with the other plastic side facing up. I'm not going to take that off just yet. And this doesn't matter if there's a few air bubbles in it because I'm not actually going to make anything with this board. This is purely just an exposure test, so any wrinkles and stuff doesn't really matter. And I probably should have turned my laminator on first. Oh well, that's alright. Um, I will trim this though, it's a bit long. And if you don't trim that, it'll get wrapped around the rollers and stuff, so we don't want that. Um, so I'll just trim that off in there, that's pretty much just waste now um, trim this as well So uh, there we go. Yeah. This is not the way to put this on. I'll do it properly for this one if I show it in this video. But I've also got a previous video that shows the whole process. So um, you might as well just get a look at that because that's where I'm doing it properly. <laughs> anyway, so let's see. Is that hot enough yet? Not sure. I will need that later, but uh, yeah, anyway. Um, so let's see, that's starting to get warm, that should be good enough. This doesn't really need a super high heat to transfer it, not like tone to transfer. Um, so I'll just send that through. And while that's going, I'll um, grab my highly dubious exposure 
lamp thing, which is just an array of UV LEDs on a piece of protoboard, um, and which have no protection whatsoever from your eyeballs, or the other way around. So yeah, don't do this, it's uh, very bad um, for your eye health to look at something like this. I'm not going to be looking at it, I'm going to be wearing sunglasses and I'm going to be running away. Um, which is what I advise anyone else to do if they're doing this sort of thing, and obviously to warn anyone else that uh, it's what's going on. So, um, obviously it's not as bad as like looking at like a welding arc or something, but it will cause some eye pain if you stare at it for too long. Um, so that's uh, been heated up. I'm just going to put that under here, just to sort of give it a chance to cool down and rest and whatever. So I'm just going to have my power supply up, so I've got uh, 12 volts for these. And I'll just check the uh, check the voltage here. And what have we got? Twelve point six. Um, let's put it down a little bit. Twelve point zero seven. That looks good. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, analog meters on this um, not uh, great for getting exact voltages. You get the basic idea, but uh, if you want to check, get to use digital. Um, but hey, it still works. So whatever. Um, so that will go on here. Um, let's make sure that's actually the right way around. Let's turn the current down. Does that work? Yeah, that works. Okay, that's good. So excellent. Um, so that's all ready. Uh, I'll just get this out of the way. And also we need a sheet of plastic here to uh, make sure everything uh, stays held down. So what I'm going to do is tape this with one of these pieces of tape. reuse this one. So I'm going to fold this over, put it on the back there, and we'll just stick that down to the table so that it's, um, it's, it's uh, like that. So now I'm going to put this on here. I'm going to take the steel rule and I'm going to sit it over this board. And then I'm going to stick my uh, sheet on top. Now, we see we have one little piece sitting at the end that's exposed there. Um, it's about uh, seven millimeters or so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this on. Um, I'm going to get my phone or something to time it with, which I've put somewhere. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'll get that, and uh, what I'll do, I'm going to turn this on, run it for a minute, then I'm going to pull this out a little bit, run it for another minute pull this out a bit more and basically every minute starting for like the first 10 minutes and then I'll go maybe every 30 seconds I'll just move this over a few millimeters and basically I'll end up with a graduated um, step of minutes versus exposure so the first bit here will have been exposed to the full 15 minutes and working my way down to the other end it will have only been exposed to about 30 seconds because it was hidden under the ruler the rest of the time um, and then that'll give me a g then I'll develop it and I'll get a good idea of like sort of where the uh, appropriate uh, thing is by just counting the number of divisions and reading off the number of minutes or whatever. Um, after the first, after the first ten, obviously it'll switch to thirty seconds or whatever, just in case. Maybe I'll go even finer than that. Anyway, um, so yeah, I'm not going to sit here for all this because obviously I don't want to look at this uh, UV light too much. Um, but yeah, I'll just uh, keep coming back and moving this every minute or so, but uh, yeah, that's about it. So I'm just going to take uh, take this off, take uh, this off, and I'll uh, whoops, let's get those out of there. It's 
not going to help. Um, yeah, so I'll just do that and then we'll come back and I'll uh, develop it and I'll see what happened. So that's that done. Um, so now we'll see what happens. Um, so I'm not sure if you can see on here, but there's a vague sort of gradient there. Uh, lighter on this end and darker on this end, obviously. So the uh, end part here, the light end here, that's going to be zero, there's going to be nothing because that last five millimeters or so was covered up the whole time um, and then we go in steps of ten uh, ten steps for the last five minutes, we've got like thirty seconds one minute, one minute thirty, etc, etc, all down to the end here this uh, last like one centimeter was exposed for the whole fifteen minutes um, so I'm just going to put that uh, aside, I'm going to put this in my pocket actually um, keep the light off it and just leave it to sort of uh, sit down there um, so I'll put this, I uh, actually I need to put this away, but I will need to use it soon, but I'll uh, just get it out of the way for now, for when I uh, laminate my other bit of board, obviously. Um, so yeah, so what I'll do, um, I'll just wait for this to sit a little bit, and then I'll go and um, expose this. I mean, not expose it, go develop it. <laughs> um, and then I'll come back and uh, have a look and see uh, if there's any difference between what I've just done here and uh, what I'd previously done with the old resist there. But given the um, new stuff and the old stuff look pretty much exactly the same straight out of the packet, um, I'm going to guess they are pretty much exactly the same as I expected. So 15 minutes should probably be uh, working. Um, what I should have actually done was get a blank piece of the um, OHT transparency. Well, that's OHT overhead transparency transparency. I should have just said OHT. Um, Department of Redundancy Department. Um, yeah, I should have just got a, a sheet of this and had it lying over the test that I just did as well, just to uh, get the exact thing. If you're going to be super accurate, obviously you'd want to do that, have a blank piece of your mask media um, as well. But, like I said, this is probably, this looks like the same stuff as that, so I probably don't need to be that accurate. I probably didn't even need to do this test. I probably could have just put some straight on, done it for a few minutes, it probably would have been fine. Um, it's always a good, good idea just to check that sort of thing. Um, and also, obviously, to show how it's done, which is the whole point of this. So, yeah. Um, obviously, you do want to test with whatever um, material you're using to hold the thing down, so plastic, glass, whatever. Um, if you just had the bare board, obviously, you know, that wouldn't um, give you accurate results because this will block some of the UV light um, at some 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 amount, um, and so will obviously this as well. Um, so you do want to have those two things there, obviously, to get the most accurate measurement. Uh, but anyway, like I said, it shouldn't be too bad, so I'm going to take this now. Um, this actually seems to be... Uh, Let's see if I can peel it off. Well, we go. We got the uh, bit of plastic. This end's actually coming off, so that's not even. Um, <laughs> it hasn't even uh, stuck on the board there, and it's still really soft. I mean, this stuff goes hard when it's exposed. So, I mean, we can tell obviously down this end, you know, few uh, segments in, it's not going to be anything, which makes sense. But yeah, I'll go and uh, etch it. Etch it. 
I'll go and develop this and then we'll come back and see what happened. Okay, there we go. So I've just developed this. Um, it looks pretty terrible. There's holes all through it, but like I said, that's just because I didn't uh, watch out for air bubbles because I didn't really care. It's irrelevant. Um, you may be able to see the gradient on this. I'm not sure. Um, it's a lot easier to see by the eye than possibly on camera, but I've taken another bit of footage from the other camera that may be a bit better if this one is not that great. It's uh, probably easier to see the actual dividing lines between each sort of step than it is to see the actual steps themselves. Um, but anyway, I mean, on this very end here, the uh, unexposed part and the 30 second exposed part completely went off, as to be expected. Um, there's a big sort of mm, bit falling off here because it didn't laminate on properly, because this edge was a bit rough, I think, and sticking up, so it didn't get enough pressure. Um, but yeah, uh, it kind of achieves sort of maximum darkness about 6-7 minutes, I think. Um, and so that's about halfway along, so the first 10 steps were 30 seconds each, um, so that was 5 minutes, and then uh, you go to like, then after that it was 6 minutes, 7 minutes, um, and that seems to be about good. Everything after that is about the same, so that's probably not uh, necessary to go that far, and that kind of makes sense. Um, like I said, I didn't have this, I didn't have any of this uh, sheet in the way to test that, that would have reduced the, I mean, reduced the amount of, UV light going through and it would have increased the time and also this is obviously fresher stuff I just bought so this stuff's been sitting around for years so it kind of makes sense it probably wouldn't work as fast and um, the reaction would probably have slowed down because the chemicals would have degraded a bit over time um, so I'm gonna guess uh, that was about six seven minutes so I'll say what I'll do is I'll do this one for about ten minutes I think um, maybe twelve I mean I don't think it, I don't think it matters with this stuff this stuff's um, not that critical as I found out with uh, this lot you can sort of overdo it to some extent and it won't really matter um, just as long as the mask is good at blocking light then you won't really have any problem um, but I'm gonna guess yeah about 10 to 12 minutes it's probably good for this like I said it's fresher than the other stuff so probably doesn't need 15 um, but yeah I'll do that with this one and uh, I'll come back and tell you what happened I'm not going to show the process because this has already gone on for too long, and like I said, I've got another video totally dedicated to making a board the whole process of, of doing this UV exposure thing anyway, so um, there's no point showing that here again. Um, so I'll just uh, do all this and develop it and everything, and then I'll come back and uh, see how it went out. And uh, if anything uh, went wrong, I'll, uh, I'll uh, comment on that, and if I had to do it again for longer, then yeah. But other than that, I mean, that looks pretty good um, as a test. Yeah, so um, I'll just start going to do this one, and then we'll see what happens. All right then, so that's the uh, exposed and uh, developed board there. It's finished uh, thing. I need to obviously etch it and everything, but uh, there we go. It's come out quite well. Uh, so that was 12 minutes about um, of uh, exposure time. Uh, I think it may have been a little bit overdone because the contrast between the exposed and non-exposed sections wasn't that great. Um, or maybe it was a bit underdone, who knows? Uh, there is a risk if you do it like for a very long time you can uh, cause the itch resist to get a bit brittle in that and it can break off so you don't want to do it too much but obviously you don't want to do it too little. Um, of course there is quite a quite a large uh, tolerance I find of this cheap stuff, I don't know about like highly professional uh, film but this stuff uh, seems to be pretty good. Um, so maybe I'll try maybe 10 minutes next time for the next board, or um, and if that's uh, worse, then maybe I'll try, you know, 15 minutes uh, next time, the time after that. But um, suffice to say, 12 seems to work pretty well with this for my setup anyway. I mean, obviously it's going to vary for everyone else depending on what sort of uh, UV source they have and what kind of uh, material they've got to pass the light through um, to get the board to get to the board. So, um, like I said, you have to do this kind of test and, and just figure it out. Um, it's all going to be different for everyone, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's worked well. Um, there are some breaks in the board and some tricks. Not not many, about mm, five, various places. Nothing I can't fix easily with the Dalo pen, um, as usual. So yeah, I mean for a one-off board, not too bad. Um, yeah, so I'll be doing that, and then I'll be itching this, and drawing it, and putting it together. Um, I won't show any of that here, though. This is the end of the video now. This is, was just about how to test the exposure time and get some ideas um, of how to sort of calibrate that. 
Um, but yeah, if you do want to see the entire process of uh, doing a board with this UV photoresist, I do have another video where I did all that before, um, which I'll have a link to in the description there. Um, so you can just have a look at that if you want to know the whole process. But yeah, this is just the basic idea of calibrating. I did explain that um, in that video too, but I didn't actually do a demonstration. So this is kind of a secondary video to that that shows the actual process that I've, I've used before and that I just used now. Um, but yeah, anyway, seems to be good. Once again, the um, cheap Chinese etch resist comes through. I think this one was even... Uh, wherever I put it now, I'm not sure, but the stuff that I just bought was even cheaper than the stuff I bought originally, which was uh, in that box there. So um, the quality seems to be exactly the same, but it was less uh, less cost, and uh, it was on the um, the uh, real real uh, roll tube, whatever you want to call it, um, instead of separate cutout pieces, which is probably better um, because it's all rolled up. There's there's not going to get wrinkled like I had with the other ones. The sheets they kind of were folded up in a box and got wrinkled, so. Um, not that great, and obviously they were A5 size, so I couldn't, I wouldn't have been able to do really big boards um, with anything like that. But with a whole roll, you can, you know, do do very large pieces if you need to. So probably I won't need to, but yeah. Anyway, um, that's good. So if you are buying that, I would advise a roll, not a uh, not cut sheet. But hey, whatever you can get should work. But there we go. That's how you uh, muck around with calibrating the uh, exposure time for this kind of thing, and. Uh, Hopefully that was useful to someone. <laughs> so anyway, I'll uh, just go ahead and etch this, and I'll uh, see you next time. <laughs>